So one would think cooling a slant 6 dust would be pretty easy, and for the most part it can be. Uh, it just kind of depends on how much power you're getting out of it. So anyway, the stock radiator was giving up. It was leaking through its tanks, and I think one of the brackets was kind of starting to come off. But the car originally had a very large radiator uh, due to being an air-conditioned car, heavy-duty cooling. So I was having a hard time finding a replacement brass radiator and knowing in the future there was other upgrades coming like the f fuel injection and turbo. So I wanted to find an even larger replacement and found one that would fit the car and work with the Slant 6. It's actually a two core aluminum radiator. Uh, couldn't do three because uh, Slant 6 is longer than the V8 so there wasn't much clearance. Uh, in fact, I measured between the pulleys, I had six and a quarter inches, and anyway, this aluminum package with the fan shroud and fans was supposed to be six and a half inches, and it wasn't. It was seven and a half. Uh, manufacturer didn't put the brackets on right. Um, there was a huge gap between the radiator and the uh, front mounting support. Uh, another downside with this radiator is it's for an e-body, so it's actually for a wider opening than the car has. I did not open that up because that would have required me to remove the air conditioning condenser. And uh, I'm still running R12 in the uh, air conditioning system, so I have no intention to open that up until I have to. So also to get this radiator in the car, because it's actually for a modern Hemi, which has an inch and a half upper radiator hose and inch and three quarter lower. So I actually used a silicone coupler um, and then uh, just kind of a, in fact it's an adapter to add a um, thermostatic control for fans, which I used originally just to trip relay to control the fans. And in fact, I had one trip off of that, and the other one was uh, if the air conditioning was on. And that worked okay as a carbureted car. So, when we want fuel injection on the car, it actually gave control of the uh, radiator fans to the ECU. And in fact, uh, that's when we switched to the Hella's um, solid state relays. It just gave me the option from the Software with the Haltech is if I wanted to pulse width modulate or when I wanted to kick them on and it was just much easier to change my mind on how to run them. And that worked pretty well with just a naturally aspirated uh, fuel injected car. Now once we uh, decided to throw a turbo on the car that's when things got a little more interesting. Uh, needed even more airflow through the radiator at times so actually and I needed more outputs from the ECU so rather than control the fans individually um, I actually switch it to where both were on or off and, you know and this worked and seemed to work pretty well until we actually did a very long road trip and through the south and, um, it was nowhere near adequate in fact the inexpensive cooling fans that came with this radiator package. Um, both of them burn up uh, while doing Route 66, so both had to be replaced on the road, which with the limited space was a challenge. Plus, you can't really just go pick up high-grade cooling fans on the road. So both both of them we ended up getting from uh, O'Reilly's. I think they were both Hayden fans, and they were better than what came with the radiator kit, but um, still were not quite adequate. So since the trip we've actually upgraded both cooling fans to uh, small fans, uh, significantly higher flow. In fact I think they're almost double what the ones we got from O'Reilly's. And they were even more difficult because they have a large motor off the back of them. Uh, I think both fans had to be moved slightly to clear other belts and pulleys on the engine. So one of the other systems in the car for cooling that, uh, in fact, I got a short video on, but maybe I need to explain more. That is, I actually did a liquid intercooler for the turbo system. So there's actually a coolant jacket in the intake manifold. So that's designed to heat up a carburetor and keep the carburetor at consistent temperature. 
I'm actually using it to cool the manifold and therefore some of the air charge again to keep a consistent temperature but I'm actually trying to go cooler uh, for the system to work there's a small electric pump in the front bumper and um, a go-kart radiator actually mounted in the left front fender that uh, also has an electric fan on it so there's two electric controls there that are uh, controlled by the Haltech ECU and what it's Haltech's looking at is the air intake so basically at the air filter and then there's a thermal couple in the intake manifold so it deciding how the greater the difference is between the two is the more it runs to pumps and fans so when I had the shroud out of the car we actually upgraded to some uh, little rubber flaps in fact they're replacement ones for um, Spall's own um, shrouds they have three little rubber tabs you've got to drill fairly precisely to get them to work right um, so we made a jig to do that and added a bunch of flaps what these allow is when going down the road rather than have dead areas where the air is kind of hitting a coming through the radiator hitting a dead end creating pressure therefore no more flow um, these flaps will open up now at lower speeds and when the fans are running those flaps will be sucked back close making the fan pull more through the radiator so also since the uh, whole trip last summer we've upgraded to a high flow um, water pump made by flow cooler which I was thrilled to find and I, I know what some of you are thinking is you don't necessarily want more flow because you need it to sit in the radiator longer but the fact is is if the water's sitting longer in the radiator it's also sitting longer in the block therefore warming up so there are times you do want to just flow more water in fact on the trip I actually removed the thermostat altogether to eliminate one restriction which worked great while I was still in the south but the problem with that is um, in fact on that trip coming back through Oregon it was trying to snow and never really got all the way up to operating temp I think I was seeing about 140 degrees luckily being fuel injection like this it still ran great the Haltech just adjusted for that also since doing Route 66 we've uh, upgraded to have a oil cooler in the car so there's uh, it was made by B&M and it's a cooler small fan and thermostat package so um, this one is not controlled by the ECU in any way it's just kind of an auxiliary system uh, the sandwich adapter to the oil filter also has a thermostatic valve in it so controls how much flow is going through the cooler um, once you get up to operating temperature all of the oil will go through the cooler and then if it reaches high enough temperature the fans are on um, so also this winter we updated the turbo to get a larger turbo plus there's um, less adapters on it but one of the other key things I did at that point was um, actually got a liquid cooled journal bearing so that turbo cooler is actually running off the engine coolant system and that's tapped into oh it's upper radiator hose so it's after the coolant has gone through the head and then it drains back into the radiator at where the drain pepcock would be so um, this was also done on purpose so with the car shut off there should be a little bit of thermal cycling and a little bit of coolant flow just from it heating up like an old Model T type radiator system. And with turbocharging the car even the power steering needs to be looked at for cooling. Originally I just used the original power steering box. I think I had a federal pump on it. I added a coupling on top in the little 90s to get to where I could fill it again because uh, normally you reach by the battery and that area is taken up by the turbo but uh, on Route 66 we got the uh, power steering fluid so hot it actually pushed out the lip seal in the box, uh, steer power steering box because that's fairly close to the turbo. So after the trip I actually put a um, Saginaw pump on with a uh, remote reservoir type housing. It just has an AN fitting on it 
and then a remote reservoir up on the fender and then uh, that allowed me to see a little more what's happening with the fluid and it was still getting too hot even on short trips so we've now added a um, finned log type uh, cooler um, on the K member and that seems to be keeping the power steering temperatures down and thanks for watching